So the first method we'll talk about is rules of thumb, which is going to be overwhelmingly, it's going to be square foot per ton. And that's, you know, you get on Google, you say, how big of air conditioner do I need? And it'll spit back probably the first 10 responses will be anywhere from four to 600 square foot for a ton of air conditioning installed. And overwhelmingly, that's going to be the quick and easy way to size an air conditioner that's used out there. A lot of contractors in our area, uh, you know, and even nationwide are going to use the, the square foot per ton. And it's simple math, and it's quick and it's easy. And, you know, basically, if you had a 2,000 square foot house and you said you're not going to go 400, you're not going to go 600, you're going to go right in the middle to be safe at 500 square foot per ton. 2,000 divided by 500 gives you four tons of cooling. And presto, whammo, you got yourself a sized air conditioner for your 2,000 square foot house. So, again, very common. Uh, it is one of the methods that's used the most. And it is also one of the methods that's um, in, you know, responsible for oversizing equipment a, a lot of the time. Um, in our marketplace, I would say easily you could call 10 contractors for an estimate and seven and a half to eight of them are going to give you a square foot per ton uh, sizing guideline because that's what they do on most houses your size and it works really good. So that's, that, that's just common in our industry. Of course, it's your choice whether that's, you know, the path you want to go down, but that is a very common sizing method. So there are a few flaws with that method and they are, you know, you know, they can get some people in trouble. So for instance, let's see uh, some examples here. So this is a, let's say this is a 2,000 square foot house and there's a 1,000 square feet upstairs and 1,000 square feet downstairs. So with that, let's say this house is in California. Let's put it in Northern California. Let's say it's in um, Roseville, California. So we have a, a 2,000 square foot two-story house in Roseville, California. And let's make that house um, let's make that house built in 2010. So in the, uh, at the time of this video, we're looking at 2024. So this house is 14 years old. So we know for a fact that in 2010, the California building code specifically said how much insulation minimum had to be in the walls of this house how much uh, insulation had to be in the ceiling, in the attic, minimum. It specifically called out the minimum type of window efficiency that could be used in 2010. For, for, for certain, it would be a, a, a dual pane window. Um, it, in 2010, probably would have had um, Tyvex, a vapor barrier, you know, plastic, uh, wrapped around the entire house as an energy code. Um, in, in, in 2010, good chance this contractor would have put it on a slab uh, concrete foundation uh, in, in, instead of a raised foundation. Um, the building code in 2010 was what was enforced, and that there's a very good chance that's what, uh, what was used. So... In 2010, if we roll the clock back 10 years and we go to 2000, okay, was the building code better or worse in 2000? It, it, it was worse. It was not as stringent as 10 years newer. So in 2010, this house got so much insulation, etc. In 2000, it got less. Roll that clock back to 1990. We had even less quality of construction standards, and 1990 would have made this house less energy efficient. Let's roll, roll it back for fun all the way to 1975. Keep in mind, the square feet of this house is not changing. So the walls that are exposed to the outside, the windows, the way the house faces, 
None of that is changing. The only thing we're changing is the quality of construction. So in 1975, there is a very good chance in the Sacramento Valley that this house got single pane windows. Okay, we, we have to assume the fact that dual pane windows are much more energy efficient than single pane windows, and they are. The amount of insulation in the wall would have been less, uh, almost impossible in 1975 to see any type of Tyvex vapor barrier wrap around the house. That just did not exist in the 70s, e even, even early to mid 80s. So in 1975, this house would have been much less energy efficient than one in 1990, 2000, 2010, et cetera. So that's what the problem is with rules of thumb um, sizing, is it's making an assumption that the square foot of area for ton of cooling needed is a fixed linear um, you know, assumption. And believe it or not, that assumption is based on about 1975, 1980 building code standards. So if I was to roll back the clock on a 2,000 square foot house in Roseville, California, and it was 100% original, and it still had its single pane uh, windows, it still had its original um, insulation in the attic, and we were to size the air conditioner for that original house, it would be between four and 600 square feet per ton. That's not that far off. But the problem with rule of thumb sizing is it's looking at that code for years ago and gives no credit to the energy efficiency that we have experienced over the, the, the decades with, with building construction. So that, that leaves only one thing, and that is a system that is sized to 1975-1980 standards, and that is why we end up oversizing equipment you know, north of 95% of the time when we use a rule of thumb you know, sizing guideline, which is four to 600 square feet per ton.